This is Twit. Yeah, so uh, the dev preview of Android 12, 12L is currently oh, out now. 12 12L. What, 12L, you say? What is that? Uh, what? Well, for the past couple of weeks, maybe months now, Jason, I feel like, uh, we've been talking about the rumored Android 12.1 uh, release that was going to come shortly after Android 12. Um, turns yeah. out it is called Android 12L or 12L. Um, and basically, it's a feature drop for foldables, tablets, and Chrome OS. Uh, most new features won't be visible on smaller screen devices. And a few of these features include the bottom of the screen taskbar centered in the screen, um, the drag icon from the taskbar to split screen to easily drag to resize each side, uh, notification panel and quick settings uh, sit side by side instead of stacked. Um, these are all kind of like, and if you look at the, if you're watching the video or if you go look at any article about this, you see the visual representation of this, you know, it really is applying Android 12 to a tablet or a foldable phone, which is, you know, has more screen real estate and it needs to change the way stuff is uh, kind of organized. So this does kind of make sense, although curious as to why it wasn't in Android 12, but you know, we can talk about that in a moment. Um, so betas begin in December through February with a final release sometime early next year in time for for the next wave of Android 12 tablets and foldables. Uh, um, and the betas will run on the Pixel 4, Pixel 4a, 4a, 5G, 5, 6, and 6 Pro. And it's also coming soon to the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Um, and the big question that's on my mind, I had predicted at the uh, event uh, that announced the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro that we would see a foldable. Um, does Is this paving the way for the rumored Pixel foldable or not? Uh, that's what I'm hoping to see. Uh, but what what do we make of this? What do, do you know? Is it curious that this is coming after the Android 12 release? Like, why separate this out? Yeah, I, I think that's one of my big questions: is why so and why so fast? Like this, there was like yeah. no time to breathe. It was like, here's your Android 12; it's official. And then a week later, uh, Android 12's old news. We're working on this new thing called Android 12L, and it's about foldables and everything. Why, which I, why L? Yeah. By the way, too 12L. I, I think it's for large name. screens because, like, for oh, okay. like for, and for us, sense. yes. So for yeah. us, like as Android devs, um, it's very apparent that Google really, 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 really has wanted like large screens, so like foldables, uh, tablet, and Chrome. So they, they've really, like, really wanted people to to develop really great large screen experiences. So it's it's for me, it's like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense because because it, it just feels like they're really trying to. Uh, drive the market that way and also kind of make it easier just because like in the last however many years that we've had tablets, there's been kind of a chicken and egg problem with like mm -hmm. large screens and like work, as, working at a product company, for example, like, like especially like where I work at Trello, uh, my uh, my opinions are my own and not of my parent company. I should probably say that, but, Fair um, enough, you know, working. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I work on a, an app that's basically like a productivity project management app. And, um, you know, it, it makes kind of sense. Like if you think about it from a high level, Oh, it, that kind of makes sense that that kind of product, a lot of people would want to use it on a tablet. Right. But yeah. the, our numbers show that we have actually very, a, a tiny percentage of large screens. And while I think, you you like the idea like i think we all like the idea of like large screen devices there's like a lot that we could do like us as a product and probably other apps as well could do a lot with a, a large screen but it takes effort it takes like extra design effort it takes extra like yeah. development effort so there's been this chicken and egg problem where okay we really want to do it but we can't justify it because we have like i think we literally have like seven eight percent tablet usage and the problem is that no one really if, if like cool apps not saying that I mean, I like our app a lot. So if, if you know, like kind of like <laughs> the more popular or, you know, the apps that people use don't have a large screen like experience, does that, that seems to imply that people will be less likely to get a large device. So it's like, yeah. we can't get yeah. the numbers, but if we're not in the space or if other cool apps aren't in the space, then people won't really probably navigate to tablets, especially since the price differential between like regular phones and large screens tend to be big. So there's this chicken and egg problem. So I think... You know, for us as devs, we've heard a lot about, hey, we've, we, you know, we do large screens. There's all these like different like UI options. Can you, can someone pretty please do something really awesome with large screens? So this is not yeah. surprising to me. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure L's for 
large. So 12. Yeah, large. makes sense. That, that does yeah. make sense. And it's interesting because especially with the productivity app that you described that you work on, which is fantastic, I, I would imagine that lends itself to a larger screen, you know, given totally. the, the boards kind of thing, kind of style and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. And, you know, I've run into the same thing in the, you know, the, the mobile apps that I've worked on from a, you know, not so much from a dev side, but from a product manager side or from yeah. a marketing mm -hmm. side. And, you know, and it's funny to see how because those user numbers for tablets are so low, it gets dismissed. And then what, you know, like yeah. the experience yeah. I ran into recently is like, you know, well, we did, we optimize for the phone, but it's responsive and it will expand and whatever. And when you look at it on the tablet, you know, it's not meant for tablet, right? You know, right. Like yeah. it's just, it's like, yeah. a, it's like a je ne sais quoi thing. Like, you know, you know that this is like, <laughs> you know, like, like it's something not, so I can't put my finger on it, but something's not, not totally right. But, um, and but that won't happen unless there's widespread adoption and we see the uptick in hardware sales and things like that. But so on one hand, you have tablets, which have been around for a while. Jason, we've talked a lot about what what is a tablet good for? I feel like that's been a theme in the, la the latter part of this half of the year, right? As I went on my, my tablet adventure of finding my new tablet and things like that. But on the other hand, you have the rising star of foldables, which essentially are the same devices. We've said this, you know, like an open foldable yeah. is a mini tablet, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, it's funny, cause, you know, when, how you say that, you know, it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem, but I wonder if the foldables are paving the way to solve the problem for the older tech of tablets. Yeah, to light that fire. Yeah. Yep. I think that foldables are something special. And I, you know, when the first, oh, what was it Samsung's foldable was like the first one and it was like, like an inch thick. I, I still feel like there's yeah. a special, yeah, there's something special about the foldable in that it's kind of, it can be sort of phone-like, but it does have that kind of fold out. So I guess in a sense, it's one device, although the price point is still a little bit weird, but I, I think there is something really special about foldables and in the same way that you can bridge from like a phone experience to a tablet experience on one device, it, it might also be that, um, I don't know, like maybe de developing your experience in, in that kind of having that kind of like transformery moment might be like inspiring. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like a lot of my team uh, and a lot of people that I've talked to in the dev community are kind of excited about it. Um, so we'll see. That's that's great. When you say excited about it, do you mean foldables or foldables in, or um, Android 12L? I, I think foldables uh, in particular yeah. and just to see where... Okay. Like if like maybe this is the device that people will start just picking up and we'll be like, right. okay, cool. Now we can do, do large screen stuff. Yeah, because yeah. it's not like it's not like an app like Trello, and I'm I'm making an assumption here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not like an app like Trello isn't designed well for the iPad, right? The iPad mm -hmm. is a tablet experience. There's probably yeah. a Trello app that is that is more than just a blown up phone app for the iPad because Apple has proven with the iPad it solved the chicken and egg thing. And Google hasn't done that on the tablet side uh, for Android devices. Um, yeah, it really, it really, I would, I would agree. It seems like the foldables might be kind of like that Trojan horse that reinvigorates the field and, and that, you know, the a broadening of the Android tablet space is the byproduct of the success of foldables. We still kind of have to see well, the success of foldables as a thing that happens, but I, so I could totally see that. I do want I do want to take advantage of a developer here who is so like when yeah. you're working on an app and you want to accommodate for tablets how currently right now before Android 12 um, how difficult <laughs> is how difficult is it to cater to that within the app package is like do you find yourself having to do two versions of the app or are there are there things within inside Android you know mm -hmm. inside the gut side of it of the development side that lend itself that people just aren't doing? That's a really great question. So um, yeah. to kind of go back just real quick, like, so just for example, as a data point, our iPad app is smoking. Uh, the iOS team does a great job. And it's it's kind of crazy how much our iPad app, it, like the, the usage is no question. Like they maintain it. It's, it's an important part of our experience to compare that to like the eight, less than 8% that we have. So in terms yeah. of like the effort, um, it's not that we have like two different uh, APKs or sorry, um, uh, uh, install in, install like uh, binaries. Nope. So what we have to do as uh, as uh, developers is if we don't do anything, you get that kind of um, you know phone experience, but kind of blown up with no right. you know with all the extra white space and tiny tiny text. Uh, what we can do is basically they call them breakpoints. And the problem with Android or the benefit, depending on your perspective, is that 
Um, Android kind of allows for so many different like device resolutions and sizes from, you know, like a form of a phone, phone factor, which is a portrait to like a big landscapey tablet. So what we often do is do, they call it, they call them break points where basically, okay, at approximately like 600 something or pixels, uh, density independent pixels, sorry, jargon in there to this amount, that's probably a tablet. And then everything below that is a phone. Mm. And so what we can do is do special layouts or special logic that says, oh, if this is a tablet, then I'm going to do this thing, or I'm going to use this layout, or I'll use this like different image or something like that. So it, in a sense, it could be no work. If you don't do anything, it kind of just happens on a tablet. But if you have content that just doesn't, you know, fit being blown up uh, very easily, then you do have to do the work. And usually it basically involves us writing a separate tablet style screen. And if we want to do something super fancy, like, you know, some of the like, like examples uh, of, of 12 level, level, 12 level, where you 12-ol. have- Yeah, you got it. That's, that's the proper yeah. way to 12-ol. pronounce it. Yeah, you got it. Where you might have something where you have dual panes, right? Where you might have say a list view and then maybe like a detail view where it's like your email inbox next to your email that takes extra, extra work. So that might not be just a different like layout, but that might be, oh, like, the logic to have two different things functioning on the same screen. So it, it can range from like, okay, no big deal to, oh shoot, we're like basically doing another whole screen or two uh, and then take right. that and multiply it across every single screen in your app. And it kind of very quickly becomes, oh, sorry, this is, we don't have time for this, uh, which, which, we, which devs hate by the way, just, yeah, we, we, we really do want to support everything, but it, it, it becomes like a design and development time like issue and and like ROI and all that stuff, but yeah, right. You yeah. got you, 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 you have to you have to review your opportunities by the yeah. by the like I totally understood. Like you like if you have a small minority of users asking for something that will take a ton of time, but the majority of the users aren't asking for it, then you got to prioritize, right? You got to prioritize by what yeah. impacts the majority of your audience, and so it goes back to that. Um, chicken and the egg kind of problem where if there was, if your numbers, if, if user numbers for tablets and foldables were larger in Android, then we'll get a lot more innovative, dedicated development around it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and testing is really hard too. Like I, I, I'm, I'm so envious of our iOS um, like fam because, you know, there are certain like very discrete like phone sizes, but with the Android ecosystem, it actually becomes a big Q and a uh, Q and a Q not Q and a Q a problem where, okay, I made it work on this like tablet over here, but then I have a tablet that's maybe, oh man, what was that Nexus? The Nexus tablet that was almost like Kindle shaped where it was like more of like a portrait tablet. Does anyone remember which one that was? Oh, the, the Nexus like a, 7, are you talking about? Nexus, Nexus 7, 7, yeah. Nexus right. 7, so yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah. So that's like a tablet, but it's portrait, like it's like a, it's like portrait aspect ratio. So we run into yeah. certain things like that, where it's like, okay, that looked really good until our awesome uh, QA tester, Eric found this really weird, like, I don't know, uh, other device that breaks it. So that also kind of factors into it. And unfortunately, like that's the kind of thing is like, do we want our app to look crappy on, you know, this set of like two dozen devices or you know, but, but that two dead of his advice, it only takes up like 5% of our user base. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hard to get the, all the numbers to gel there to make it worth doing and to satisfy the small amount of people that are there. Um, yeah. I, th- I think at this point, I'm just kind of crossing my fingers that the foldable thing is, you know, is the providing that fire uh, to enable it. Cause I would love to see the tablet experience in Android be more developed. 